I'm Joshua. So maybe just to give a bit more context, uh, uh, thank you, um, Adrian, for the wonderful uh, sharing. Uh, basically, we are four person, including myself, uh, Adrian, um, um, with one as well as Aloysius. So I'm actually at this point, I'm acting as a product owner. So, so of course, all of us are agile practitioner. I guess everybody know how it works, right? So as a product owner, so I have to explain uh, on the what side of things. So it is really talking about trying to share what I know about swimming from all my research. Of course, predominantly, my, my understanding comes from scrumbook.org. So, so uh, the, the good thing about scrumbook.org is that um, they, it is actually a collection of, of this wisdom uh, and also very, very avid practitioner. And, and one of the key contributors is uh, Jeff Sutherland. So, so over here in Jeff Sutherland, he, he believes that this scrum pattern sequence can lift any, lead, uh, any teams uh, off to a good start and help the best team even better. If you are referring to the thing on top, I, I'm talking about the uh, project language of highly effective teams. So, so of course, in, inside the Scrum book, uh, it has many patterns, like what he has suggested, uh, um, but there's also a sequence of patterns. And one of the very important sequence of patterns is this project language of highly effective teams. It consists of nine key patterns. You can find that in the scrumbook.org. And this key pattern, um, one of these key patterns, swarming, which is something that we felt uh, is very, very important. And we have uh, actually get some um, feedback from people that uh, swarming probably is a very good topic to start off with. The, the more as I, I work on it, I realize that it is really absolutely true. Because swarming, basically, it is, I felt that the more I, I work on it, I realized that is really the heart of a good agile team. If you can exhibit swarming well, you can, you, that you can easily say that this is a good agile team. So let me move on and just share what is the definition of swarming. So swarming occurs when as many team members as possible work simultaneously on the same priority item. So it's talking about one item. Many, many people come together in a team, as many people as possible to work on it one at a time. Work on just on that item until it's done. Then you move on to the next item. That's swarming, okay? And, and looking at this diagram, right? This is really talking about a race car that actually moved to the to the to the the, the, the maintenance lane, and everybody the will just swarm to the car as fast as possible. They do a very quick maintenance, top up fuel, change tires in split second, then they move out again. So that is really talking about swarming at, at the highest level. Okay, so of course we have a few gurus that has mentioned that swarming basically is focused maximum team effort on one item in the spring backlog to get it done as soon as possible. Or you could also say that it's a stop starting and start finishing. I, I like this second statement especially, it's really sum up so well. It's really, because if you, you, if you happen to um, look through, right, um, in any, any agile teams, there are a lot of them keep saying that I'm doing agile, I have actually a lot of scrum board, but when you look at the scrum board, it, there's nothing that, that they're suggesting they're doing swarming. Because if we are doing proper swarming, uh, honestly speaking, the burn down chart, I felt, you should be able to see the ideal burn down chart. That means item by item, you actually burn down pretty quickly because they simply follow the concept of stop starting, but always start finishing. So they finish one item before they even start on the next item. Okay, and that is very, very likely that you will have that very nice curve. All right, sorry, the, the very nice uh, burn down chart. Okay, so how the swarming actually looks like uh, in more detail. So first, um, in a swarming team, right, you, I think to ha have that happen, normally it is a cross-functional team. You have front-end developers, back-end developers, tester, or also um, DevOps. But of course, uh, um, in, in, in the agile team, or uh, the agile world, right, um, it's not just uh, stop at the software development. You can actually look at even other, the industry they have, have many other, um, 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 teams, uh, there's no doing software, but still doing agile. So, but this is actually the example if you are all software developers, development team. So it should be cross-functional. This is what I'm trying to say. And, and second, team implement and maximize flow of production of spring backlog one by one. So we are talking about maximizing the flow of production of the spring backlog items. Okay. 
it is really talking about a continuous flow. And, and this where this is where I'm coming from. And, and the team should always know and, and focus the maximum team effort on the top priority spring backlog item only. So when an item on the top of the on the on the spring backlog, everybody just work on it with maximum effort. Okay, so that we can finish really fast. So this is really pulling as many people to the item. And the whole idea is about simultaneous way to, to all known work as soon as possible. It's really talking about working it simultaneously, like back to the, 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 the example that we have, the sports car, everybody just swam to it and, and work it and push the car out from the lane as soon as possible. So, so when swimming actually happens, normally they will have a captain of the item because it might be a work that requires more front end work at that point of time. So the front end developer probably will be the captain of the team at that point of time. And everyone must help the captain wherever and wherever they can do to be possible. And of course, no one will interrupt the captain. And as soon as possible, um, okay, sorry. And as soon as possible, the responsibility, okay, because I cannot see my slides. Uh, um, Sorry, hold on. I let me switch off the caption. Okay, yes, sorry about that. Okay, so as soon as possible, as soon as the captain is done, whoever takes responsibility for the next uh, backlog is the captain. So in other words, when the final developer, he probably has done, finished a job and while other people is helping. So once the, the pie is finished, then we pass it to the back end. then the back end developer becomes the captain until everybody have a, have a hands on it and then we finish the ship out. Okay, so that is the whole concept of software. Okay, so there's a few examples uh, in the software world. Um, mobile, so of course, this uh, mock programming is one way of swarming. If you happen to know what's mock programming, meaning to say that you have a group of people, probably four or five people, uh, just looking at the same screen. They all, they could be all different functions, uh, probably a feed, uh, front end, back end, or we'll be actually working on the same piece of code. And of course, they will actually take turns and share the keyboard. Really depends on who will become the driver and the rest will become the user. This is one way of uh, uh, implementing uh, swarming. Another, of course, uh, pair programming could be another way. Okay. So why swarming? Okay, basically swarming is to stop something called multitasking. I think we all know. And of course, inside here, uh, this is uh, a diagram that shows um, how a person can be really effective, okay, when he, they are only working on one thing. So on the left, the green bar, 100% effort to it. But if you look at when there are two things that's working simultaneously in the project, you will start introducing the context switching. So there'll be some overhead losses in terms of coordination. As you continue to have more and more working, things working at the same time, you will have more um, uh, uh, if, uh, so called effort loss, uh, time loss, overheads uh, because of the multitasking. So, this is something to be, that we must be very mindful of. So, so basically, it's, it's actually a myth uh, that people thought that things will run a lot faster with multitasking, but the truth is, study has shown uh, number one. Okay, one. This is, okay good. And it actually makes people slow and stupid, increasing stress and accelerating uh, aging low process efficiency and associated delays, scattered effort due to personal preferences and impediments, and reduce individual effectiveness, uh, team velocities, and enterprise well-being. So there's a lot of things that's happening. Uh, but in fact, it's not nothing good, but just bad. So, so it is also keep us kind of step thinking, how could we actually help the, the whole of organization do something better? And that's why I felt that the, the, the Scrum methodology is so good because they come with the idea of this product backlog and spring backlog. I think that is really the, the, the thinking behind it. How can we really do things one at a time? And Swami is really one way to do it, a very good way. Okay, so work done faster with Swami. So basically it is all about this. A few work done is always better than many incomplete work. And so do take note that incomplete work is a form of waste, nothing to show customer after spending time money, resources, and effort. So at the end of the screen, right, if you have started so many items work in, work in progress, by the end of the day, nothing is pushed to done. So, so how? <laughs> that, to a certain extent, we are actually, there's a lot of waste. And, and, and incomplete work 
is something that we should always avoid. Okay, so this is my last slide. Uh, so this is really what we really aim for, a hyper-productive team. When we do swarming, these are the things that, that will happen. Less coordination overhead, shared vision and common understanding, autonomous and self-managing, okay, cross-functional and learn from each other in long term. Basically, uh, the idea of a swarming actually helps people start to do T-shaping. In other words, because we, especially in the mock programming, right, a front-end uh, developer probably can, when he sits down and do swarming with other people, he will start to appreciate uh, the front-end development example. So this is how we actually form uh, T-shaping. And, and, and this is something for you to know also. And lastly, of course, by doing this, we are constantly doing review of our work because when somebody is working on it as a captain, others is reviewing. So of course, when reviewing works, it's always on the fly, highly likely the product will be high, high quality. Okay, so there is the thinking behind it. Okay, so these are some of the references. Uh, uh, no worries, later the slides, we'll still put it in the same mirror board you can easily download. Uh, as we mentioned, oh, whatever work that we have done so far, this is supposed to be open source. We want to share this with everybody 